Hi, I'm Tim Talicki from InOut Labs. We are a national provider of employee drug testing services. Today, we're going to talk about a refusal to test. So what's a refusal to test? Well, a refusal to test can be determined in three different ways. Uh, one could be the MRO. So during the interview with a donor, let's say a test result goes to medical review office, to the medical review officer. The MRO, speaking with the donor, determines that this specimen was substituted or adulterated. The donor basically admits to it. The MRO can call that a refusal to test. Employer. Uh, employer determined refusals are when an employer tells an employee, you've been selected for a random test, you must go now, and the employee does not go when he was told. If he waits till the next day, that's a refusal to test. And then there's a collection site refusal where the donor leaves the collection site before completing the process. So let's say it's a temperature out of range, meaning the urine's too cold or too hot. It's pretty clear that it did not come out of the donor. The donor is told he must provide a second specimen. Under DOT, it's under direct observation, but non-DOT, the second specimen. And the donor decides to leave the site instead of providing that specimen. That is a collection site refusal to test. A trained collector will normally tell this individual that if they leave the site, uh, it's a refusal. They must stay until the process is completed. They tell them they have three hours. You can drink 40 ounces of water. There's a whole process you go through. Um, so the donor you know, should be told these things, but it's not a requirement. If the collector does not tell the donor this and the donor leaves, it's still a refusal to test. So how, how does the employee know that that's the rule? if the collector doesn't tell them? Well, it's something called employee education. Employee education is one of the core requirements for employers under DOT programs. So you've got a uh, written policy, you've got employee education, you've got supervisor training, you've got uh, random testing, and you have uh, access to uh, employee assistance. Those are five core requirements of a DOT regulated program, uh, but it's good practice for everybody. So if the employer has not provided the employee education, then the employee doesn't know the rules. It doesn't change the fact that that is still a refusal to test. So there's a lot for employers to understand and know when it comes to the DOT regulations or just drug testing process and policy in general. Uh, if you are using, for example, an occupational health clinic or uh, some other provider that's just providing random drug testing, um, you know, you might not be getting all of the things that you need. At In Out Labs, we provide a, a complete compliance package and we will help with all of those things, including the FMCSA Clearinghouse, which is a new requirement in 2020. So a refusal to test also must be reported to the FMCSA Clearinghouse if the driver holds a CDL. So yes, a lot to process, a lot to understand. If you want to learn more, stay up to date with our other videos, please subscribe to the video, like it, give us a call, 847-657-7900. Uh, we're, we're happy to answer whatever questions we can. Obviously, we'd like your business too. Uh, our website is inoutlabs.com. Uh, I'm Tim Tellicke from InOutLabs.